Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays where it's time for another uh, Minecraft update because it's a what day today? today it must be a must be a Saturday for Minecraft updates yes so I'm going to be talking about the Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles uh, mod pack as usual and so over here we're in in the um, in the bottom level the sort of the service area of the mob farm so I've dropped in down through the um, through the trapdoor above and then down here well we've got the We've got the um, blood altar through here that's picking up the life essence from all of these mobs in here when I step, when I poke them with this pokey stick like this. So you see, I poke a few of them, they all fall over, and then if I look at them, look at this, then it, now it's nice and full. So yeah, that's going quite well, except I seem to have been withered. But apart from that, that's that's going quite well, and I don't think it's actually life threatening. There we go, recover, recovered again. So. The reason I'm over here is because I spent quite a lot of time in the last stream trying to automate this. So I could pull this lever and then it would automatically poke the uh, the mobs in here with this dagger and they would and they would all get killed horribly and, and provide the life essence for me. But unfortunately, well, if we look around I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, if we look around here, we can see you can see that all of this is now be it's it's been mostly removed. So we've got a sort of a couple of little holes around here, but basically this this there was um, there was a thing in here that we put the knife in that was supposed to do the stabbing, but it turns out it doesn't work. So we used a couple of different things for this. We used um, an auto automated user. So I built built one of these up, which was somewhat complicated, but fortunately a lot of this stuff was already in the storage system, so I was able to find it without too much difficulty. So I made one of these, put it in there, charged it up. So I, I ran this um, power cable up all the way up to the surface and stuck a solar panel at the top to make sure it would actually work and had power. But when I put it in there, it didn't do any of the stabbing but if we, it turned out if we came over here if we took one of these swords out and put that in then it worked so we thought okay maybe it's maybe something funny about that one we try so we also tried the, what was it, the mechanical user as well and this again similar sort of complexity level of, of recipe you've got the uh, plates all the way around the outside a couple of funny things in the middle some gears and some crystals and whatnot again i i had to make a few things in order to get this but that wasn't too bad it basically, it basically worked um but unfortunately that wouldn't use the knife either so a bit of research later, it turns out that the um, the sacrificial dagger or what, dagger of Sacri dagger of sacrifice that's what it's called um, doesn't actually work on um, uh, it can't can't be triggered by automated machines. It can only, literally only be used by a person standing here and going poke 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 poke, which is kind of frustrating, kind of annoying. Um, it means it's, this, collecting this life essence is a rather manual, more manual process than I would like it to be. So as you remember, probably remember from last time, we set up for, for the blood, we set up this spiky plate over here that automatically kills the mobs. The blood goes down through the pipes and into the tank here, which is now completely full. So you can see how well that works. But over here, oh, there's a a little min miniature zombie running around trying to kill me. Let's, let's deal with that. Stop it. Right. Um, <laughs> so yes, whereas over here... These tanks are well. It's filling up at the moment quite slowly, as you can see, because um, because because the life essence is. Oh, there's another one. This one's on fire. Stop it. I really should f block this off slightly more effectively, um, just to stop them coming out. But with the redstone in there, it's slightly more awkward. Anyway, I'll do I'll do that at some other point. So um, yes. Yeah, so as you can see, this is filling up quite slowly uh, f because the. Um, the, the, the uh, blood altar drains quite slowly and so it'd be rather nice to have a faster way for, of, de of dealing with this as it is we can still pull these um, tanks out of here and I really should bring some more back and put them in um, so, oh, there's a ghost of a zombie there um, so, so, so they'll be a bit more ready for me when I come round but to be honest it's, it's barely worth it because every time you come over here and do the pokey pokey you get about 10 buckets worth of blood out because that's what you get from a full blood altar and then you either hang around and carry on poking at it or you just deal with the fact that that's all you're going to get and, and 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 run off with what there is so i'm going to put this dagger back in here because if i do that then there's a good chance that other people will do this for me um on their on their travels and then run off and show you the rest of what's been going on so that was a bit futile unfortunately a bit like my abilities of my attempts to jump out of this hole let's try that again there's too much ah pfft. i think we're running into some issues where there's now enough lag on the server that sometimes you just lose your momentum. Oh, goodness sake. <laughs> I can't get out of here. Right. Yeah, whenever the server lags, you lose any momentum you've got, which is annoying when you're flying either with the slime sling or the um, elytra. With the elytra, it's not so bad because you can make it kick in again and get some more momentum from it, from, from your height. But with the, with the slime sling, it's quite annoying. So yes, I can fly back over now with the with the elytra, and that actually does basically work. This is 
very this is extra laggy though i don't know whether it's local lag or server lag but um whatever it is it's, it's a little bit annoying so we can come down over here now and this as you as you probably remember from last time we have the input and output chests for the um for the rune systems and over here I've been making, I've been starting to use these reinforce, I've been starting to make the various different types of slates because I want to make, let's have a look through here, I want to make these uh, displacement runes and these are these runes when you put them on a blood altar make the blood altar pump the blood in and out a bit faster than it normally does. It gives, if each one of these you put on it multiplies it by 1.2 so you get a 20% bonus but they all multiply together in a sort of um, in a compound interest kind of way. Uh, the problem is they're rather expensive so doesn't look too bad you say it's only it's only four, four slates and some water and a and blank rune. Yeah the problem is these imbued slates uh, take an imbued come from uh, sorry come from um, putting a reinforced slate block into a, into the blood altar and a reinforced slate block comes from four reinforced slates each one of those comes from putting a blank slate block in a blood altar and each one of those comes from making four blank slates each of those come and each of those comes from putting a block of compressed stone in the blood altar so I reckon I, I did the maths and to make one of these these runes of displacement, uh, or to, rather to make the uh, slates for one of these runes of displacement, means you need to pump an entire stack of compressed stone through the blood altar. So in order to help out with this, Tristan came over and dropped some more, and I left quite a lot of it, quite a lot in here at the um, end of the last stream, as you can see. Um, Tristan has brought even more over, so we've got a huge amount of compressed stone here. And so during the week, while whenever anyone's on the server this will attempt to churn through here because it's even with the with the, uh, the runes i've made so far it's still a very slow process we do one like that um so that's a tier two rune i think possibly a tier three that trickles off goes up the pipe and now we wait for this to fill up again once that's full this signal round here will eventually get high enough that it'll trigger this as i talk, told you told you about in the previous episode and it will poke another one of them out of here will go into here and be um, and be um blood altered so it yes it's a rather slow process we do have quite a lot of um life essence available there's 160 buckets here and some more over in the in the uh, um drop off building um but we're going to get through we're also going to get through a lot of it trying to produce all of this so we'll we shall have to see how it goes however during the stream i did manage to make two displacement runes so i put them on here to speed this up so this should mean that this altar is now going at about 1.5 times its uh, sorry this blood altar over here should now be going at about 1.5 times its normal speed let's see if i can investigate it with a rune there it is divination sigil that's what i actually meant not a rune so i boop it with this no it it tells me it's oh it tells me that there's 5000 lp in it down in the bottom left and it tells me it's tier 3 in the top left but it doesn't actually tell me any of the other stats of the thing like how how fast it's running or anything like that so i just have to sort of take its word for it i suppose and i could perhaps uh, these are linked to it as we can tell i mean if i um because i poked this with the rune and it gave told me how much was in the altar but yeah i can't i don't have any proof that it's actually affecting it and making the and making the blood flow in 50 percent faster i suppose i could take them out replace them back with the normal blank runes again and see if it see what it looks like but I don't. I don't want to. I, 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 I'm worried that I might. No, actually, no. I wouldn't lose any of the blood from it because it's already. It's. It's. The capacity is the same. So, but yeah, I'd, I'd have to. I'd have to put quite a lot of effort into working it out. And I'm not going to do that right now because I'm trying to make a video. So yeah, the the my my slightly more long term goal for this is to replace most of these blank runes all the way around here with the displacement ones so that it fills up much more quickly and then perhaps put in a couple of um a couple of runes of capacity which increase the amount you can hold in the altar so instead of being up to ten thousand it'll be up to i don't know oh oh, oh no uh, oh i see so the upgrade wait what that's five thousand no right clicking with this tells sorry <laughs> right clicking with this tells me how much blood there is in this blood orb here and therefore how much there is in the network for me to play with that's what the 5000 lp in the bottom corner is it's not actually about what's in this blood altar despite me having tried to use it on the blood altar okay that's um <laughs> fail um that i can i can tell by looking at it and crouching down and we see that this one is getting is, is filling up to a total of 10 buckets so they're the same capacity if i want to make it bigger <clears throat> then i can make another type of rune which is the rune of capacity this one adds on i think 
two buckets for each one you apply or there's the rune of augmented capacity which uses two runes of capacity and some other, and a load of other stuff um, and that adds on something like 10% or 20% so when you're starting off you're better off using the runes of capacity partly because they're cheaper and partly because you get more from them but at a certain point the runes of augmented capacity which will have a multiplicative effect rather than just an additive effect will be will be better so at some point I'll switch you can switch over to those but you don't actually lose anything from switching over because you need these in order to make the other ones the other one that might potentially be useful at some point is the speed rune and that affects how long it takes for the actual imbuing process that happens inside the altar to happen and so if I if I put in enough runes of displacement to get the um, so that the uh, the altar now fills up more quickly than it's actually using the stuff. Then we can then we can put in the runes of speed that will allow us to pump the things in a bit more quickly. Um, sorry, use imbue the things a bit more quickly, so we can then have things everything just run run a bit better. Um, this is all sort of future and theoretical and so on because I'm not going to do it right now because I don't have the I don't have the basically, basically the, the altar is still currently so slow that there's no point whatsoever. So I'm not not going to do that. Additionally, all the way up at the top of the tower, <clears throat> I um, did some playing around with the starlight and, and making um, infused wood. And you do that by throwing wood into the uh, into a pool of molten starlight. So I got took, basically took a bucket out of here, poured some in a hole in the ground, threw all the wood in it, and I now have a load of infused wood in in my backpack. Yes, there it is, infused wood planks. So. I promptly made some columns out of it. I also made some arch pieces out of it, but I don't know how to use those, so I don't have an arch going across here. But this seemed like a reasonably good idea. I thought I'd just yeah, chuck it all in around here and see what happened. The next big and actually quite exciting thing I've done is automated the mana creation. So, in the past, we've had a couple of different ways of making mana. One was to put in the... the um, what are they called? The uh, the the, the flat water flower things, uh, hydro angels. That's the one in these gaps in here, where they've got a couple of blocks of water within range of them, and they will then produce mana, which will be then picked up by the mana spreader, put into the tank over here. Or you can have the endo flames, which is these flowers, and you just come and, and every so often you wander by, you throw blocks of coal at them, and they will burn the coal and produce mana from burning the coal, which again will be picked up by the mana spreader, put into the pool. So the, these are, these, the problem with the Hydro Angers is that after a certain amount of time they wilt and die. Um, so you can't use them in the long term because you put them in and they just, they just stop working after a while. The Ender Flames don't have that problem, but you do need to keep them fed with, with some, something they can burn, some sort of fuel source. So that's what this system here is. We can put in a load of flammable stuff in here, like coal or um, what have we actually got in it. We've got, we're using blood-infused coal, so because we had loads of blood, and this doubles the amount of fuel you get from each coal, which is nice. So we put that all in the in the drawers at the top here. It goes down through the hopper into the into the uh, precision dropper. The precision dropper drops it on here, <clears throat> and as long as this plate is pressed nothing else will come out of the dropper because when this plate is pressed it creates a redstone signal and this is in deactivate on redstone essentially so you so this will um so whenever there's something on this plate and that could be me or it could be a piece of coal this this will turn the uh, turn the dropper off and so and so the idea is you'll get one piece of coal here then the end of flames will grab it burn it and because they've grabbed it another piece will pop out and the, for the next one to grab and so on and now the reason we've gone over to using normal coal rather than blocks of coal is because apparently the end of flames will take so long to burn an entire block of the stuff that by the time the next one, uh, the, the 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 one that was sitting on the plate will have despawned before they're ready for another one. However, if you use the if you just use normal coal or blood wax coal, it'll sit there. Uh, these burn it sufficiently quickly that they'll grab the next one before it has a chance to despawn. So why are you saying why aren't they burning at the moment? Why isn't there anything on the plate? Well, that that brings us on to the um, the other the redstone behind it that you probably noticed. Here we have a comparator hooked up to the uh, the mana pool behind it. So this is reading how much is in there, and then outputting it on this on the redstone here as a as a as a, as a redstone signal. And as as we discovered with the um, with the system downstairs that was measuring the amount of blood in the in the blood altar, this one measures the amount of um, power. Uh, this this measures the amount of um, mana in the ma in, in the in the mana pool, and then outputs it outputs it as a number between 0 and 15. So at the moment it's on 13, and redstone has fairly high resistance, so the number drops as you go around here, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, So as it gets to 1 here, that's not, that is enough to count as an input signal on this um, on the dropper. Um, 
and so, uh, so the, yeah on the dropper and so that is that is also turning it off so it stopped dropping and this is so that we don't waste coal by having it dropping out and being fed to the end of flames when there's when when the mana pool here is completely full so this system works quite nicely we've got the uh, mana star next to it that tells us how much ma well, sorry what the what's going on with the pool whether it's filling or emptying at the moment nothing's happening so there's it's just sitting there like a flower if it if, if it was filling up um if, so if i if i took these out of here and and learn how to play Minecraft and threw one of them on the floor. One of these, there we go. The uh, one of the, that end of flame has picked it up. The it's now so it's, it's now producing mana. The mana spreader is picking up the mana that it's producing and zapping it into the tank over here. And we've got these blue twinkles coming off the top of the uh, the mana star to tell us that the tank is filling up. At some point, we will start using mana in a slightly more automated way than what we currently have, which is just you come along here, you throw something in the pool, and it gets mana filled. But for now. It, it, it is okay. It's adequate. We, we've got a supply of it, so that's that's the first step of, of trying to automate the whole system. Uh, let's put this all back in in here, and this will immediately trickle straight down back into the into the hopper um, because that's how hoppers work, and then into here, and it'll be it'll be passed out as and when required. So we've got a, a steady stream of mana available. We also went on quite a long. I was going to say quite a long walk. It wasn't actually a long walk. It was a long fly. We sort of disappeared off to that over that way, and Al killed me as is his way um, because he's excessively violent and so forth. Um, I think I got attacked by something else, and I said, hey, and while I was halfway through saying, "Hey, don't attack me. I'm on," or "Don't do anything to me. I'm on very, very low health," when he hit me with something and killed me. So that was that was somewhat annoying, um, but. T to be honest, kind of expected from this group. <laughs> we found some ships. We found some. Um, we found a weird glass column thing. We found a hot air balloon, and we, we we salvaged a load of random stuff from there. So it's just useful stuff that we might need at some point in the future. That's basically all I did. So I spent so long faffing around with trying to generate, um, trying to generate life essence in an automated way that I didn't really manage to get much else done. So I guess now the now we go on and talk about what other people have been up to. So Tristan finished off his logo, so there's now three of them up there. I can't remember if there were actually three in the last video. I can't, I'm afraid I can't remember exactly when I recorded it. But anyway, that's 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 that. He's been working on a spider farm somewhere um, and a trading hall. Let's go and have a look at the trading hall because it's sort of... I mean, at the moment, it's not a trading hall. It's a building that will at some point become a trading hall. But it's sort of kind of slightly pretty, so let's go over and have a look at it. Um... So yeah, it's because because it's going to be about trading, and that's what and, and trading is all about emeralds. The whole place is being given a sort of a a temple-y, emeraldy feel with green pillars, and I think he was he was considering what what whether any of the uh, the chisel patterns from um, emerald blocks are, are worth using. Um, we considered that Mike could possibly recreate his lawn with uh, em with emerald in these two patterns for the stripes, but that might be a little bit decadent at the moment. It's, at the moment, it's, it's made out of concrete, but uh, it, it could be replaced with emeralds. Um, and, and why not, I suppose, yes. <clears throat> um, I do know that Mike has been putting um, solar panels on the roof of his house. So up here we've got a nice um, a nice solar system uh, up, up and running. So it's got some uh, er erodium solar cells, which I gather are the sort of the, a, a, a later tier one. And we've got sol solar panels over here and ones, twos and threes and various different things. Um, so that's that's producing power for and i think it's then cabled out to the rest of the base so we're getting power basically everywhere he's got a, a sort of an attic system up here where uh, this is actually re reasonably close to the way real world solar panels work in that they're all built onto a sort of a frame thing that holds them that holds them on the roof in the right place then they go into a controller system that actually turns the electricity into a use into useful into a useful form um and then we've got the, and then we've got some big batteries that are storing power, and then cables feeding it off into the house or around the back of the house, as, in, as the case may be. I should probably put that piece of wood back, or Mike will be very upset with me. So let's pop back out through the roof. Boop. I didn't know there was a hole on the a, 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 a trap door to go up into the in, in there. So there we go. He'll, he'll never know until he watches the video. <clears throat> now another thing you might have noticed as I've been flying around, depending on how observant you are i suppose because <clears throat> i didn't notice it as i was flying around no not the chickens this time um al came along and, and decided he didn't like the uh oops, oh, for goodness sake. he didn't like the stairs i'd built along the uh, in front of the tower and to be fair they were a bit because they were all black they tend they all sort of blurred together into one so he decided he'd come along and sort of redesign it so this uh this new new look front of the tower is courtesy of al uh we've got Still got the main big black staircase leading up to the front, but there's also this little white ones going off to the sides and and little bits of decoration and stuff around. So 
it's generally a bit more interesting than it was when I when I built it. He's also improved the doorway, which is something I'd been meaning to do, but just hadn't got round to, including these um, large rusty doors, which, um, yeah, they look pretty good, and they squeak nicely when you open, creak nicely when you open and close them, which I feel goes quite well with the uh, the whole, the ambiance of a, of a, of a dark wizard's tower. <laughs> but he hasn't just been doing... Um, architecture on my tower for me he's also been carrying on with the uh, with the B system over here and once again I'm going to recommend that you watch his video that will be once it's released it will be linked in 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 my video as well so as you can see over here he's he set up um, some various filters that are pulling out essentially all the types of uh, all no these sorry these are these are feeding yeah look, look at the filter these this, this is feeding in uh, forest drones and meadow princesses and pulling out everything that appears in there so in here you can in theory um start breeding your bees you can have the you can put in the um the meadow drone and the forest princess and it'll produce various types of bees that may or may not be better i don't know i you'll have to ask him about bees and they will the bees will then go in and out of sort of these pipes and be taken off over to the storage area down here which will presumably be covered in bees i I'm not 100% sure. As I say, watch Al's videos for more information about bees. I know all I know is that there's all kinds. Of, there's there's lots of bees, lots of bees, lots of bees, lots of bees, lots of bees. Uh, that one looks more like a wasp, but maybe that's why it's rustic. But so this is it is a thing that he is working on that is apparently coming along. Um, he's also brought a um, the com computer system over here with a crafting terminal. Um, so from here you can again search the um, the storage system, which is a bajillion miles away over there. This is rather this is rather handy actually. I should probably put one of these in the tower to save me from running around all over the place to try and get things. And we definitely need another one of those inside the personal crafting area here, um, because this number of times I've been over here trying to put something together and realised that there's something I'm missing, and then I had to go all the way back to the storage area is incredibly frustrating. Um, I don't think anyone has done that yet, so. It, it is it is clearly on it is something as well if it's not on the to-do list it should be on the to-do list and I'm going to request that it is um, pro and probably also I shall run another cable over to the um, the tower because there are also there's also quite a lot of crafting goes on over there so it'd be useful to have the systems up and available and this works through a system of cables as well so down here we've now got we've got the uh, leadstone flux duct which carries power over here for anything that requires power I'm not sure what does to be honest in the in the bee area, you'd think bees would probably be okay. Um, then we've also got the um, this ME glass cable, uh, smart cable, and more more ME cable. Um, I'm not fully up on how ME works. I'm going to assume it's going to it's basically like an item duct in that you have this cable links links all of the different um, computerized things together, and then you can chuck things down them using these using these cables and Obviously, when you get to a junction like this and there's far too many cables and ducts and things in one place, you then have to mess around a little bit and try and organise them so that, they, so that things go, go the right way. Um, this is... Oh, yeah, this is the... What's called, apparently. This, I believe, is the um, ore smelt... Ore crushing area. Yes, it is. Uh, so we've got two different ducts coming in here. One to bring stuff in, one to bring it back out again. Potentially, at some point, this will all be replaced with the uh, computerized system and, use, and using these pipes instead, and maybe it'll all be a little bit smarter. Or maybe we'll just leave it as it is because it currently works. Who knows? We'll see how that goes. There have been a few more quests completed as well, of course, because that's what... That's what we do while we're playing. Uh, so there's lots more of the uh, the Tier 2 quest lines been opened up. I've not been doing any of this, though, so to be honest... I'm the wrong person to ask about this. Uh, we're basically it's been making lots and lots of machines and enrichment chambers, crushers, purification chamber, who knows? All this sort of stuff. Um, it's all a bit beyond me, to be honest, because I've been getting on with all the magical stuff. Like, um, actually, I've not done anything else over here yet. Um, oh, no, I made an imbued slate, actually. That was, that's probably new. Um, so there's, there's, there's always more things around here to play with, but I, I haven't been doing any of the dark magic. I haven't been really advancing any of this stuff this time because I've just been trying to make the blood altar a bit better, a bit more effective, a bit more powerful. I did do a little bit of white magic. I made a sextant as well, which allows me to look around in the sky and see, see places where relevant um, white magic starlight things can be done uh, and next time I'm going to try and build a starlight crafting altar and probably start looking at incense as well because these are mildly interesting things that that need to be done in order to to advance the quest lines over here so I'm going to try and sort of split myself reasonably evenly between the light and dark magic where does this go oh into the uh, office building okay so I'm going to try and yeah carry on splitting myself between the two different um, types of magic and just filling up filling the tower up with lots more machines and magical shenaniganeries and hopefully 
bringing the um, and bringing the blood altar up to be a bit more effective. Because at the moment, it's really slow to do anything because it just takes so long to fill up with blood, and that is a pain. <laughs> so as we can see up here, we still we are gradually gaining these reinforced slates. Now, are reinforced slates are they the middle t second tier or the third tier? No, they're the second tier. So all of these. In fact, I'll show you. I'll show you what we do. We do with all of with these. So we take them out of there. You then need to combine them into reinforced slate blocks, which I'll take all of those. Thank you very much. And then put them into put the reinforced slate blocks into here, and they will be taken away by the system. And eventually, they'll be imbued with um, still more. Uh, they'll be imbued up to the tier three level, um, and then I'll have. Yeah, so there's 17 of those, tier 3. Yeah, so I'll be able to make a decent number of the uh, of the more advanced runes by that point. So, we shall see how that goes. And by decent number, I mean 4. It's not still not very many. So, all of this um, processing, how is it getting... Is it getting through... Yeah, it's getting through a lot of... In fact, this tank is now completely... Oh, no, yes, this tank is now completely empty. So I need to pull the top tanks off here, take them back over, refill them up. The blood is going quite nicely. That's virtually full, so I don't care about that one. But these ones, yeah, let's pull these tanks apart like that. And I'll head back over to the um, back over to where I started over in the mob farm and go and get some more um, life essence up on uh, up and farmed. So thank you for watching. I hope you've uh, hope you've enjoyed. What on earth is that? Is that a giant chair? It is indeed a giant chair. Why is Tristan made a giant chair? What is going on over here? A giant chair with a hole in the middle as well. I. I don't know. <laughs> oh well. So thank you for watching. Please, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not, because I'm desperately trying to up, up my subscribers. I, I hit 700 um, on Tuesday, which is uh, which is rather nice. I'm trying quite. I, I want to get. I've got a target. I want to get to a thousand. So if you can help me out with that, that'd be much appreciated. Um. And then, yeah, and all, of course, come back for all the videos. These come out every um, every Saturday. We've got the stream itself on Mondays to give you a bit more of an idea of what's going on on the uh, how how the whole process works, should we say? Um, let's move that sign. How the whole process works. What what go what goes on when we're doing these things? And then, and then Factorio happens on Wednesdays with the stream. Then, and the videos come out on sun on Sundays. And we'll, I'm also trying to squeeze out uh, Minecraft videos. No, no GTA videos. They're they're coming along reasonably well. And and many other things besides. So as ever, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.